By the way, I think Miley Cyrus is the only sitcom actor uh-huh. uh, who is able to move the needle. Like, you know, they push you during sweeps. You know, you know, can you get a Shatner? You know, if we could get Shatner on Big Bang, I know we'll write. That's probably not a good example because it probably worked. But like for the most part, shows just get what they get. They always get what they get. It doesn't matter. These co-stars and these, they, right. they, none of that matters. Right. No, it's totally, right. Is it funny? And do you like, do you like the people? You know, do you like the people? And do you like what they're, you like the world of them? You're listening to What the Hell is Michael Jammin Talking About? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about creativity. I'm talking about writing. And I'm talking about reinventing yourself through the arts. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Today, I have a wonderful guest that I that no one deserves to hear. And yet, as a, as a gift, if you're driving your car pull over, you're going to want to hear this guy. So this... This man and his writing partner are they are responsible for literally one of the biggest hits in the modern era. And I'm talking about Will and Grace. So this is the co-creator of Will and Grace, Max Muchnick. But let me tell you what else he's done. All right. It's not just that. I'm gonna run through his profile for a second, and then I promise I'll let him get a word in edgewise. One word. He's Dennis Miller show. He was right around the Dennis Miller show, the Wonder Years, Good Advice, The Single Guy, Dream On co-creator of Boston Common, co-creator of Good Morning Miami, co-creator of Twins, co-creator of Four Kings. This guy's got a lot of work done. Uh, Shit My Dad Says, co-creator, Partners, co-creator, Clipped, co-creator, and of course, Will and Grace. Max, let me welcome to the show, and let me tell you why this is so meaningful to me to have you here. And me too, just to, let's, to get a word in. Yeah, okay, I wonder if our- And by the way, those credits yeah. were in no particular order. Well, it's a, it's the IMDb order. Uh, it's we it's a weird order, but but I'm still thrilled to be here. So uh, I'm gonna let you keep going because I, I like I like all this. Uh, Everyone loves I, having smoke blunt. Yeah, <laughs> blunt no, it's, their fantastic. Ass. <laughs> it's fantastic. Let me tell you why this is why it's so meaningful. Because one of the very first jobs I had in Hollywood, I was a PA on a show called Hearts of Fire, and Max and his partner, writing partner David, were. I don't know if you guys were staff writers or. Or story editors. Uh, um, uh, I think on Hearts of Fire we were staff writers. I okay. think we were staff writers. Yeah. So I was, you know, I'd get you lunch. That's basically it. But you two, you guys were, you guys were so kind. You always let me in. You, I come into your office. You'd invite me into your office, which to me felt like a big deal. And you guys were both, to me, you were the epitome of what a comedy writer is supposed to be. Like larger than life, uh, charismatic, funny, ball busting. But, but also just, I don't know, just like energetic and enthusiastic and but like bursting with creativity and to be around you guys. Seconds away from tears at all times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. too. But, but, but I mean, we maybe didn't show that to you. But I, again, I hate to interrupt you when you're saying all this. Nice all stuff. The, well, I do remember one time, David, I was sitting with you and he's like, what have you heard? I'm like, what have I heard? Yeah. What, what do you hear? I'm like, dude, you guys are the only people who talk to me. What have I heard? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. What am I? Hearing? You know, and and I was listening to you. And by the way, uh, it gives me nothing but joy to be here. And um, um, I have to do full disclosure. Okay, mm-hmm. so I I start watching you and listening to you, and I'm like, uh, um, I I I you know, this is what happens when you get to be 40, 57. You know, I I, I said I, I'm like I'm like I know him. I have a feeling of love for him. Uh-huh. I do not know how we know each other. So funny. I couldn't you don't remember know the show that we worked on. I couldn't remember the show we worked on. And then I heard you talking about Mike and Maddie. Yes. The other day. And it was like, which isn't on my IMDb page. It is. I skipped over it. I didn't want to embarrass you. Can be, yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> glad that we, we, have, that we can talk about that too. But like, oh, so it, but it all started at Hearts of Fire in yeah. Mozart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And that was such an incredibly um formative time i mean and and uh it's so interesting to me that you had this experience of us as i mean and that by and large that's what we are you know i mean we do i always look back on life and i reflect on it uh and i'm always happy when i look back on on the things that i've done and where i've been and where i'm going and all that stuff but uh, you know like today not so much what do you mean well it's like I'm saying like when I'm in the moment of today, 
a, a lot of times I, I really can get wrapped up in being, you know, a, depressed about the business and where things uh-huh. are. And, you know, I mean, I'm starting to say things that, you know, like old people say, and I don't want to, cause I always thought I would, I would never do that. I would never say the business isn't like it used to be, you know, but I'm surprised you even feel that way. You've already accomplished so much. Like what I, I'm, I don't think I would have, I don't think I would ever get to your level of success. Cause I would have stopped long before. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's nice. And, and I know that there are people who are, who are in my position, who, who, who uh, feel like they, they've done it. And definitely the uh, collision of uh, a career and, and social justice, you know, which, mm-hmm. which kind of took place with, with Will and Grace, you know, the yeah. idea that we did this thing and then it had like, it had a, reverberation on another level uh sh- you know should be enough but i i'm still uh i'm still a a a, a guy with uh with ambition and drive and i and i still feel like i have more to say and yeah, and so i'm not i'm not spoiled in that sense i i really don't i don't want to be done at this age i i, I and and if anything my ego is um, in a better place because I I can even fantasize about the idea of being in a room that I wasn't running. If the, you know, which really? is crazy, you know, because that's like it, you know in the middle of my career when it you know at that really hot space, you know, uh, it's like oh no, you know, you I would I could never be in a room that I wasn't that I wasn't in charge of. But that's right. It's not that's not how I feel so much, you know, but I, you, but the hours are so long and exhausting. And you're like, sure, I'll work till two in the morning every night. Well, that that's what I wouldn't. That's what I couldn't. That that's the one thing I would pre-negotiate. <laughs> that's I, I don't feel like that is something that ever needs to be the case. Uh-huh. I'm way into having dinner with my family. And I feel like it's after 10 p.m. It's diminishing returns. Well, yeah, I, I actually think after 8 p.m. It's diminishing returns because you're you're emotionally you get so you know your skin starts to break out you're eating out of styrofoam and it's just not it's so bad for your your where you are uh you have to just love the fucking show you're on can i say that you can say what sure you can say show uh you know you have to love where you are so much to be working late or own you know but how did you keep the hour with the hours good on will and grace Yes, because we've we've run a meritocracy and we always have. And that is the best idea will out. So uh-huh. I don't care if it comes from a schlub, a lowly schlub like Michael Jammon. Yeah. Or if it comes from, you know, John Quaintance, it, 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 it wherever the best idea and wherever the the the, you know, the most honest idea that's organic mm-hmm. to the characters comes. And, uh, the, you know, that's the one we're going with. And I'm very I think one of the things you master or you have to master to be a showrunner that um, uh, works well and, and runs it, runs a tight ship is the ability to say no um, quickly and without, Mm -hmm. without uh, a lot of fumfering. Yeah. So I'm going to say no, and I'm going to say it quickly and it's going to feel like it hits you hard and, and, and may, and maybe it does, but it, in order for us to uh, run a tight ship, we, we that's just the way that it has to go. Yeah. yeah. And I was I was also listening to you uh, the other day talk about those schools of. Um, and that's what I was going to get to. Goes, yeah. Um, and and you could say that we I, I, you talked about there's the friends school. Yeah. There's the I think there's also the Diane English strain. Mm-hmm. You, you, did you mention that one? No, I did. I only really mentioned the one that I thought I came from. I think I came from, which it's was Frasier, Frasier, Cheers, Taxi. That, right. That's, so that's that's and that and, and I call that that's that's the David Lloyd. That's the David Lloyd's. I mean, yeah. Uh, and Chris was, Lloyd. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But the, but the, what, 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 okay, what would you say your lineage would be then? And do you agree I, with that? It would yes, I did. I agreed with everything you said. I would have to. I would have to. I mean, my lineage is actually. Um, it's a must see TV sound. It's an NBC mm-hmm. uh-huh. uh, sitcom sound, but that's really the friend sound. And I, you know, and I come from that because my my first real job was on Dream On, which Martin David created. Right. 
And, right. and then I came in late, uh, uh, David and I came in late on that show. And, and, but, but I also come from the Diana English school because um, Michael Patrick King was such a giant influence in, in my sound. And that was good advice or what? Good advice, but he yeah. had come from Murphy Brown. Right, and of course. So yeah. if you worked at Murphy Brown, you were, you prayed at, at you know, at the yeah. altar of Diane English. English. And, I mean, but those those friends, people, they just spawned so much. So, much. But you don't run the show the way they did, though. Not at all. No, not yeah. at all. Um, uh, um, I, you know, when we 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 learned as much on shows uh, from what not to do than from what to do. Uh -huh. You know, the benefit of being on shows where they're it's just um and and I'm not I'm not make, uh, using uh, David Crane as an example because I've never been in a room with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have been in rooms where either we weren't used or mm -hmm. we we uh, you know there was just endless endless talk that went absolutely nowhere, mm -hmm. and the decisions weren't made to just that's good, that's it, put it up on the board. Yes, so you can get there very fast, and not at the and not like. There is, there is a famous school that I don't want to that I don't want to talk about uh -huh. that um, that <laughs> so, that lives that has a uh, it's good enough, it's good enough. It's good. That's enough. not what I'm talking about. I don't I don't do it's good enough. Uh -huh. But there is there is uh, there is a, a a world of shows that that's run with that ethos. See, I thought one of the first the advice that we got when we started running shows was I think it was Steve Levitan that said. Just pick away, even if it's wrong. Pick away. Yes. Or you yes. lose the room. You know. Yes. I mean, it's like you can you can fump for around forever about oh, you know what you want to do with your life. I don't necessarily know that that this was this was what I was going to do, but but it just it happened, and I went for it, and uh, you know I got I got rewarded. Um, you know, at a certain point, I feel like if you get rewarded in something that you're doing within six months to 12 months, stay there. Wait, were you running a show that wasn't your own? It was your first job at, um, no, or no? no my, my, you know, I, I was, I, I'm a, I'm rare, I'm rarefied in that regard uh -huh. uh, that um, I was at, I was at, uh, in, in uh, at Emerson in uh, college and, mm. and uh, my dear friend was a comic named Anthony Clark. Right. And Anthony called me and said, <laughs> um, they're making they're making shows now in LA and there's a company that's very focused on um writers who have strong relationships with stand-up comics. Mm -hmm. And it, the company was Castle Rock and Larry David was just mm -hmm. making Seinfeld at that time. And uh the the guy that ran the company with Rob Reiner was uh, a, a wonderful man named Glenn Padnick. Mm -hmm. And uh he gave us our first break, but it, we had to go into Warren Littlefield's office as these young guys and argue mm -hmm. for why, why would I ever give a show on this golden network to two guys that have never done the job before? You've never run a show. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was, excuse me. I, I was on single guy. So I, I mean, I had worked. But I had never run a show the first time I ran a show. Yeah, but I I wasn't even close to running a show. I was a I was a co producer, and yeah. I in there and I said to him after I got David Cohen a, a white shirt with a collar because I'm like <laughs> you have no idea yeah the difference of a collar you know yeah. and a neck what what the difference that it makes you know put on a goddamn buttoned up shirt and we go and we sit in there and I say to Mr. Littlefield who I owe a great deal to. Um, if you give me the keys to the car, uh, I, I, I promise not to scratch the car. And if I scratch the car, you can take the keys away. You can bring in whoever you want. They can oversee me, but just give me like li literally give me a week, give me a show. Uh, and I, and I, and I already know what to do and not to do. And I'll run this thing the right way. I mean, and this was before you wrote the pilot. This was just to get the uh, chance. To um, I had uh, had we we had written the pilot and they wanted to make it. Oh, okay. And, right. and then they said to our agents, or they said to Glenn Padnick, 
these guys have no experience. You, you've got to go get showrunners. Yeah. And, and um, I was just so anti the idea that someone was going to creatively be, you know, yeah, over I know. and, um, um, and I asked for the meeting and, oh. and, I, and I, you know, and I begged him, you know, and I always, I kind of tell that story and the, the whole truth of that story is a day or two before uh, he went to our agent and said, I want someone at that table read who runs, who runs a show. I want, I want an experienced showrunner in case at the, at the pilot table read, mm. you know, they fall apart and God bless the writing team of Roberto Benabib and Carl, uh, uh, Roberto Benabib and Carl Fink. Mm -hmm. I even think I think and and uh, I could be getting that wrong and I hope someone calls us out on it but 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 um, anyway those guys were so cool and they sat at the table read and we got our notes and then they walked up to us on the stage where we were shooting the show on Radford and they were like you got this boys we'll see you later and we never we never saw them again and, really and then we and then we were you know show running yeah did you bring top heavy writers to the first you know david's sister who wasn't the superstar yeah, right that she is now was. david's uh brother's brother-in-law uh was Ooh, i'm talking about your your first staff i'm talking about yes David. i know yes and, really? uh, and and uh i don't know who the third one was i remember there being it was a mini room before before it was self-imposed you know before yeah, I, it was imposed on us and and it was just this very tiny group because David and I didn't know how to yeah. administrate and do all that. And we figured we would do um, all of the heavy lifting, and which was not possible. And we eventually brought in Carrie Lizer. But right. we started with a very, very tiny group of writers uh -huh. and, um, and just, you know, crawled our way through. Wow. Yes. Wow. Cool. Should we spend... The next 59 minutes talking about the single guy or should we continue talking <laughs> about your <laughs> no no we can't talk about, about that show but it was really cool to be to work with Ernest Borgnine and, and I'll just put it to yes. you yes what uh -huh. what is the uh I'm gonna ask you a trivia question Johnny what, what? Johnny was his name no uh, yes, wasn't it <laughs> yes I went to high school with him so that's not that's not okay good. and his and his dad was Johnny Silverman's father was uh David Cohen's rabbi in real life. Oh wow! But but, but um, uh, I mean, we were we lived in an industry town. You know, that's what that's what it was. Uh, but uh, no, Ernest Borgnine. Um, in addition to having a wife that was a cosmetics, you know, had a cosmetics dynasty. Tova Nine was the uh -huh. name of all the lotions and potions. Uh, Ernest Hemingway. Little Borgnine. Known, got him. What? Borgnine, Borgnine not Hemingway. Hemingway. Not Hemingway. Anyway. <laughs> Shit, that would be so bad. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, Ernest Borgnine had a collection, the best collection of what? Does anybody know? Dutch ovens. <laughs> no, no. He, no. <laughs> no, he had a good one, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but moving on, he had the best collection of uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln um, memorabilia because on the weekends he used to go to Beacon's moving you know beacons moving uh -huh. and they would sell off the dregs of whatever was left in a truck that people didn't pick up and one time he went and he bought a painting and it was of abraham lincoln uh -huh. and he takes it to you know wherever sotheby's or heritage whatever he did and it turns out to be one of only two portraits ever ever uh, painted of abraham lincoln while he was in office wow that started this epic collection. We've so we've digressed into such boring stuff. Yeah. And I blame you. I blame well, you. I, I brought up this is, you're running this room. You could cut me off at any point. No, I could not. But let me ask you this though. Um, you've created so many shows, and obviously the the writers are the same. So what is it? You know, why was Will and Grace like why that one, not the other ones? Why was that uh, one that blew up? Uh, well, I, I I think I have a glitch in my casting, uh, my casting programming. Uh -huh. You know, I, I, I didn't know to second guess myself in the way that I, I did after Will and Grace. I mean, it's a great question because it is the thing that like, if anything is, it could be a regret in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that I've just, I haven't made 
great decisions at crunch time. And and um, wait, so you think it was ca- it was casting decisions? You think, but you uh, don't well, get to cast. Look, you, you put it on the page, and then it's these br- it's these brilliant actors that have to operate like in a in a medium that's not respected, but is possibly the hardest form of yeah. acting. Yeah, and and uh, um, uh, you know there are very very few people that can do it as well as, you know, the, the ones that we know. And, and Jim Burroughs always says, you know, it's, it's lightning in a bottle. Yeah, and, it is. Um, uh, you know, so that, that it's that, and it's less moon vest also being, uh, you know, not great to me. Well, I mean, I was going to say that like, every casting decision has been approved by a million other people. It's not like you could, you know, right. I know. And you want to believe it at the time and you get in there and you sell and you do your thing. And, 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 and and then sometimes you don't you don't believe in a person that's going into a cast, but you've got you know less uh, has got a thing for that person, so they, yeah. they go in there. But by the yeah. way, that man gave me a lot of breaks, and he was he was he was good to me, you know, for a period in my life. But I also think he did some super fucked up things to our shows too. Uh, right, Your partner should have stayed on the air, and he took partners off the air too quickly. And no one had done anything like that. And they should have explored the, you know, uh, a gay guy and a, and a straight guy being best friends. Right. So that's an, that, that's an interesting area. What is it? And so, but, but you guys mostly work in sitcoms. I know you did some, some, some movie work, but is it, is that just the form you want to be in? Is there any other itch you want to you have? No, not really. It's just, it, it just kept, I mean, we kept, uh, you know, every every few years when they say, you know, it's back, we want them. You know, uh-huh. let's go to people that know how to make them. You know, um, we're yeah. we're on that list, and and um, you know, I mean, I'm doing it again. By the way, you know, since this uh, strike is over, and I hope that they they're I hope they work. Oh, you, what you're you're taking a multi cam right? Yeah, yeah, we're working on a couple of multi cams right now that that I'm I'm really excited about. But I would love to not do it anymore. I would love to not do it anymore. What do you mean you'd love to not do it? I don't. Understand. I would love to write like what I think single camera comedies are, which is oh. a beautiful when the, when when it's done exquisitely. You know, I think it's when when you if you write Fleabag, that's like yeah a masterpiece. It that's was a masterpiece, masterpiece, but it was a play. I mean, you I remember watching you go, "This is a play." Uh, yeah, but but I mean, I know I don't. I, I but you can't. I don't know if the, you can't knock it like that. It doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, really it's not a knock. I mean, it's a compliment. I mean, yeah, these yeah. long monologues, and it's like it's not. You know, it's just not done. It's not. But it's she not, still, she still was so brilliant that she figured out. She figured something out about how to make great, great fucking episodes. Oh, oh I no. Listen, I, we're on the same page. I, I was yeah. a masterpiece, freaking masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, and what I like about it is that it does feel like a play to me. It's really, you know, it's yeah. conversational and yeah. it's, it's intimate and and brave. It's courageous, man. Man. The the the, the fi- I think it's the final 20 minutes of the second season. Um uh, I think that's it. I think that is that's it. It's uh you'd be hard pressed to find a better um a better single camera comedy ever written. Yeah, I agree. Uh, from the moment that that the uh, the the priest shows up at her apartment to mm-hmm. sleep with her, uh, and I think that goes straight to the end. I yeah. don't know beat for beat where where I've ever seen it, where I've ever watched a better script. How do you feel when you watch something like that? What does that What does that do to you? Because you're a professional writer with a huge, great track record. How does that make you feel? Um, I I love I love I only have that attitude of the more the merrier. Like, uh-huh. like it's, all, it's only good to me. I, I'm, 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 if you're asking me, uh, uh, in a coded way, am I ever jealous of something? Uh, um, a, a little. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, yeah. Do, do, w- w- would I like to have created the bear? Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. Yes. But, but, but I, I, um, um, I'm more proud of Chris or, uh, and impressed that I know him and, and, and I love that that and I love that that happens. I, I mean, I, I I get more offended by the bad stuff. Uh-huh. You know, I, I just can't stand the bad stuff. The good stuff. I'm like, God damn, that's exciting that that, yeah. that got made and somebody left that writer alone and and their vision was carried through to, you know, to the end. 
Hey, it's Michael Jammin. If you like my content, and I know you do because you're listening to me, I will email it to you for free. Just join my watch list. Every Friday, I send out my top three videos of the week. These are for writers, actors, creative types, people like you. You can unsubscribe whenever you want. I'm not going to spam you. And the price is free. You got no excuse. To join, go to michaeljammin.com slash watch list. And now back to what the hell is Michael Jammin talking about? Will and Grace, you could tune in an episode and you know you were in for some big, big laughs yeah. in every episode. And I don't know, you were inviting these friends into your home every once every week. That's what it felt like. You were yeah. inviting the, your, your friends over. And that's, there's I, an art to that. Yes. And there's an art to picking the best, the best writers that, you know, that money can buy. Yeah. Which is what Will and Grace always had. I mean, the, the star power in the writing room at Will and Grace was spectacular. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, to a person, it was just, it had the best run of writers and, and, uh, but the only time it went, it, it went off the rails is, if uh the heart got taken out of a story mm-hmm. and and if if the heart wasn't there then the thing didn't hold up that's right uh and 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 so you have to lay a foundation in the first act and make sure that um all that stuff is true and real at the beginning and then you can go kind of wherever you want mm-hmm. uh in the second act then you can get nuts and then resolve in a very mm-hmm. real way but if you don't actually start from a a true place of, oh my God, I cannot believe you are sleeping with my brother. Yeah. Right. Uh, that hurts me so much. Why? Because you're mine. You're, you know, right. Or yeah, yeah. whatever that story is. Uh, uh, you want to just, you want to just hit those, those notes that everybody, that everybody understands, you know. Now, when you brought, when you rebooted Will and Grace, you, did you bring back the entire writing staff? Um, we didn't bring back everybody, but we brought back most, most, most everybody. And what's shocking about that, you have this amazing writing staff and that they were available. Mm. We had to be patient. We had to, we had to, we had to work a little bit of magic. And, and, um, uh, and I, and I also think like, I mean, it's embarrassing for NBC, but I, but David and I had out of pocket some, some fees. Oh, really? You You wanted them that bad. Yeah, but but it, but it's you know it's like it's it's worth it. It's worth it. It's like oh you're not you're you're gonna stop at twenty five k an episode for uh-huh. this wildly talented person. Yeah, um, uh, uh, and they and for their for their integrity and they need it to be twenty seven five. Right, you know it's like take it out of mine. Right, right. Um, it- and we had to. I mean, and. Uh, uh, to 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 give you the full truth on that, it was more with with crew, with crew uh, that we did that. We well, actually, did you did you want your old crew? Yeah, I wanted I wanted. I mean, there are people you know that you want. The, the, you yeah. want the, the the show to sound the same, and you want uh, you know. Yeah. You what was it like bringing it back though for you as a creator? You know, it was incredible. Honestly, it was it was such an incredible thing. I mean. I, I I mean we brought it back thinking that uh Hillary Clinton was going to be president uh-huh. and and uh, the uh, the the twisted irony is that you know um the game show host won uh the <laughs> office but but we we uh we um and it ended up really giving us stuff to write to you know yeah. because, because if if you're just preaching to the 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 third that you have, it's like, you know, what's fun about that? But it, to me, I mean, I guess I'm interested in like your characters are now much older. And now, like, I wouldn't have thought when Will and Grace done, when ended, I'm not really thinking about where, where they're going to be years from now. I, I'm just done thinking about them. I know. Well, and it and it kind of did have a, a, a finality to it. But um, uh, I mean, I've told the story, but but the, it, you know, the set was at, at, at Emerson uh, How was and, it? And it was done, and they were done with the installation, and it was getting moved back on a flatbed to to LA. Uh-huh. And uh, my husband and I were in London, and I was bereft about uh, the ele- the way the election was going. And sitting in the back of a cab, I said to him, "You know, if I had the show, I would have um, 
I would have Karen uh, training Rosario on a mountain climbing, on a rock climbing wall, mm -hmm. uh, because I would do a story about you're going to go back to Mexico, but then you're going to climb back in after you go back, right? Right. And and I w I just wanted that to see that visual of of Shelley Morrison on a rock climbing wall and Karen training her, and and uh, you know in response to him, you know, right. you know his those horrible policies but but and and eric said to me well honey why don't you just go why don't you just go do something about it and and and, and make it you can the sets the sets where it is mm. all the, all the actors are where they are and they were amenable thank god thank god god bless them for 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 doing that because you know it didn't have to go that way it was right it was much easier than you would think to put it to bring it all back together Right, it's with the rebuilding. That's so interesting. Yeah. What when you guys are coming up with show ideas? I, I mean, I don't. Know, are they just coming to you? Are they? Are you always come coming up with ideas, or is it like okay, uh, we got to come uh, up with an idea? No, I mean, I, I'm coming up with ideas all the time until um, uh, someone pays me, and then all of a sudden I can't. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, uh, you know, it it it's like. I don't know. I, I can't sleep. I mean, do you sleep? I don't turn my brain doesn't shut off, you know. And so I'm always kind of thinking about stuff. And by the way, we've written some of the things that I love the most that mm -hmm. we've ever done has they've never seen the light of day. Yeah. And I think that one of like the little twisted crimes of our industry is the fact that agents um uh, and studios you know if they have any sense that you've written something ago you know that you wrote it back when uh -huh. they don't want it like it's like it's like a loaf of bread or something like that yeah. as opposed to a piece of art you yeah. know that that it it's still relevant it still makes sense you know uh, these characters are, are vibrant and exist but but you know you you they, they don't that it feels like used goods even, even if it's never yeah anywhere and so you guys you your partner you know that you meet every day and you're coming up with ideas or even when you're not you know, i i'm very good that way like yeah. i don't feel like i i i can stop and i really? i don't want to stop uh um dave dave is arguably a happier person you know um and he doesn't feel the same desire to beat himself to death that's um, what it is yeah i mean but but we are we always we've had a dynamic for I mean you know our daughters are very very close which oh really is a gift of life for both of us uh -huh. um, but uh, I always I always I mean I say this in front of him and and behind his back it's it's got our our, our relationship has that that lovely um, Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin sort of one of us is in love with the other one and one of us doesn't care uh -huh. <laughs> and and Dave's just like he's like. But he's my brother, so he's right. not like he's going anywhere. But it's just like, stop trying so fucking hard, you know. You, you know, I, 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 I get a little, I get a little uh, sweaty when I don't need to. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you've had so much success. I, I just, it, it occurred to me. I just remember one time, I was over at your place once. I don't remember where you were living, but I remember you had Enya on. It's so, it's so crazy that that like. <laughs> So, so wait, I'm going to, I'm going to make my relationship to Enya. Um, I'm going to bring it back to writing sitcoms because, um, uh, okay. I mean, nope. my, my anxiety has been, has always been a present part of who uh, I am and, you know, what you referred to as the, the fun of coming into my office. Yeah, you're right. But, but it's, it, it, you know, it's driven by a kind of, uh, kind of anxiety and on, um, uh, I guess it would have been good advice for Michael Patrick King. Uh -huh. um, uh, um, uh, I was having such heavy, crazy anxiety, um, uh, like to the point of kind of passing out anxiety that I had to go every time we had a break down to my car and listen to Enya on um, a CD. Is it because you were you're worried you're going to be fired? Is that why? I, I I just didn't have that, you know, the, there's a really, there's that very scary moment of existing in a writing room mm -hmm. of what your output is, you know, like Jeff Astroff, by the way, such an incredible, uh, you know, 
uh, uh, writer in a room, such a good room person. And mm-hmm. that, but he lives by the thing. If I don't, if I don't put a joke into that script today, I can't go to bed tonight. Right. Oh. You know, and, 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 you know, that, that can, that drives a person. Right. And I just was in these. And so you have to get, but Michael Pedro King got me a little bit more comfortable with, I can't, I listen to you sometimes and I watch you construct comedy on the fly and, I, uh-huh. and I'm impressed with it. And I, and, and I think, uh-huh. what the fuck can't I still do that? You know, but I tap into something different. I tap into a different thing because I think life just across the board, other than rape and cancer and uh-huh. Israel is pretty much everything is funny, but, uh-huh. but, um, and I feel really good about exploring the, the most uncomfortable truths of my life. And that's yeah. where I get the stuff from, you know, uh, but I wasn't there. I wasn't there. And, and, uh, and certainly not at, at the beginning. And Dave Cohen comes from such a pedigree family Mm-hmm. That that he you know it was it was second nature to him to to just construct really clever wordplay and stuff like that and I was really panicked about that at the beginning. Interesting. And, uh, and I used because to- because you know that in the room of writers, if you if you're gonna if I'm gonna choose a, a team of writers, and I have eight picks, the first eight are story people, not joke people. Yes. You know. Yeah. And that and and like and I. I mean, and that's that like generic question you ask a writer when you interview them. So what do you think you're best at? Story or, yeah. or yeah. well, I'm really good at story, right? They always yeah. I'm really good at story. <laughs> you are good at story. Like, <laughs> none, of you, tell a fucking story. none of you are good. It's crazy. It's crazy how many people can't tell a story. Yeah. You know, and, and or that the the joke thing of like you want to say to people and you don't. It's like, okay, close your eyes, go to the table, read put that joke in the actor's mouth and tell me the response that you hear. Do you actually hear people laughing at those oh. words? You know, because that's how I always do it. It's like, right. I, I'm like, I'm like, just, you know, and then you be, it becomes second nature. Like, yeah, that sounds right. They will, they will make, they will make EW, she'll make you funny. Uh-huh. If you, you know, right. Uh, that will get a laugh. That will right. get a laugh, right. But, but it's always shocking to me. Like the, the, clunkiness sometimes mm-hmm. that's pitched and it's like that's not gonna work yeah yeah how funny you know? how um, funny but but you know it's it's like and and if i'm calm and you got time it's like you can try to you can try to get it but you really want you want a michael jammin in your room to just give it to you done uh but you oh to give it to me done it's so interesting you know the go starting out i was just a joke guy and then you know yeah. but that that you don't you won't keep your job long if that's all you you know if that's yeah. all you understand right no you have to be able to like because they that you go to that run through and the entire back half of that story falls apart so you yeah. have to be a technician to say mm-hmm. if you if you do this and you do that uh the back half will as we say it's an f12 it will write itself you know <laughs> but, but, okay but it's not you know it doesn't it never does that unfortunately but 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 um i will tell you this speaking of that that during all of this ai and and the strike and uh, uh my writer's assistant that's been with me for a very long time and i won't say his name because he hates that he's a writer's assistant yeah. but he's incredible uh um a friend gave him um uh, a will and grace, uh, an AI written will and grace. Oh, and and it, I I mean, this is the upsetting part. Oh no! Don't go there. Don't say any of this. What is it? I, I know. I mean, but but the truth is, it's like, well, if this is what came to me, mm-hmm. you know, if I sent a team off, if I sent a group off, and I said Karen and Jack are going to have a garage sale. Bring me back that story. I want it. I want two. I want. I mean, I'd break the scenes with them, but mm. two scenes of the first act, two in, scenes in the second act. It's a B story. Uh, 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 give, give me, bring that back to me. Uh, it, it, it wasn't like it was so far off. Wasn't so far off. So better than better than staff writer. Um, this is scary. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, I don't know. It's like I, if it was in front of me, like we could even read it, but it, I don't have it. I don't want to give. 
I don't want to give you know any credit to that. But like I I'm I'm gonna name drop, but I told that story to Norman Lear at dinner not too long ago. And yeah. he told me that someone had done it for him too on I think it was on All in the Family. And 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 we I think I believe that we agreed that it was it wasn't an abomination. This makes me sick a little bit. Oh, it's sickening. Yeah. Completely sickening because it it calls 246 episodes of Will and Grace. Yeah. It figures out, you know, what what those people sound like. I mean, look, it was if if I if I delivered it, if I if I I wouldn't deliver it at a table read, it would still right. it, it would it would be that thing that I was talking about there there wouldn't be laughs. It didn't have like it didn't have heart construction, yeah. Right. But but, but, but enough. But, yeah, but it, but 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 it could go right. It, that's good. That's a callback number fifty six. A callback. Good enough. I posted about um, James Bros yesterday about what he said. I don't know if you saw it. I'm, oh, I, I did, what... and and we should talk about that. Yeah. What are you? What's your? Because he basically said, and I, and I think it was misinterpreted a little that there are thirty great. There's only about thirty great writers to do sitcoms, and I what I think he meant was thirty great showrunners. I don't or or potential showrunners, not yeah. writers, but. Um, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, because I absolutely didn't agree with him. And you started to talk about it, uh, uh, you, you know, um, and then like always, I kind of turn you off about five yeah. minutes. But, 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 <laughs> um, but, but I will say this, it's like, uh, um, uh, you hit on exactly what it is. The reason why we like it is because, you know, multicams are the comfort food of America. I mean, yeah. they are the, that is the show you want your kid when they come home from school, turn on an episode of friends and watch that thing. And then, and then dinner will be ready and you, and, and it goes down easy and you love it. And yeah. you even can know where it's going and it, and it's still yeah. satisfying. Right. Um, um, but, but it's, it's, I didn't agree. I didn't agree with Jim. Uh, it, it, and I hope that he was misquoted because uh -huh. I, I I I'm not sure that it's over because uh -huh. of of how much it's actually liked by a, a if you, you go ahead and uh, create everybody loves Raymond and and I and I dare America to not want to watch it. Well, like okay, growing up there was a show called Small Wonder. It was just a, yeah. you know it was one of these syndicated you know whatever, and yeah, I yeah. would watch that. And I said to my partner recently, I was like, how come we can't get on Small Wonder? Like, where are those shows? Yes. Put me on Small Wonder. I'd, I'd be happy working on Small Wonder, but they don't exist. Well, no one programs that way anymore. Like, I, I still believe if someone made the commitment, I mean, they must have papered this out somewhere. But I always think, shit, if I ran a network, I would, I would ask the higher ups, <clears throat> can I please develop uh, sitcoms from eight to ten? put them on the air and may, will you give me a guarantee that I get to put them on the air for two years straight, all four of them, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it, it doesn't happen like a movie. It doesn't yeah. happen. And I mean, it's a, <laughs> I mean, you try really hard, but it's a flu to get anybody to, to, I mean, to get a pilot off the ground in that a scene, they don't know anybody, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's the hardest yeah. thing in the world. But I believe that if if multicams, uh, they if I I believe that they weren't driven by star casting, okay. because star casting always fucks up a multicam. Of course, there are examples of big stars that have made shows work, like Charlie, uh, you know, uh, and, and 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 Julia even. But but you know. I mean, there's that list of names that if we weren't re being recorded, I would just say yeah. it's like all these fucking like famous people that aren't funny. And wait, is it because you think they get executive producer and they give notes and they change it? They they make the show what they want it to be. You mean? Yeah, I mean that I don't give a shit about that. That is, but that's all bad. That's all bad. And uh -huh. Jim, I mean, that's all just Jim Burroughs though won't allow that, um, which is a, a a gift. He doesn't. He though the world has so changed. Yeah. That if you you know if if, uh, if uh, Miley Cyrus wants to do a sitcom, um, uh, by the way, I think Miley Cyrus is the only sitcom actor uh -huh. uh, who is able to move the needle. Like you know, they push you during sweeps. You know, you know, can you get a Shatner? You know, if we could get Shatner on Big Bang, I know we'll right. That's probably not a good example because it probably worked. But like for the most part, 
shows just get what they get. They always get what they get. It doesn't matter. These co-stars and these, they, right. they, none of that matters. Right. No, it's, right. Is it funny? And do you like, do you like the people, you know, do you like the people and do you like what they're, you like the world that they're in? That's what actually, and that is a good segue to what I wanted to talk about as well. Shit. My dad says, you guys were on the forefront. I'm, you know, that was the a Twitter. One. Popular, what? The, it was the first one. Right. The first one. So I'm saying you were on the forefront. You were the first ones who did that. And I remember because it was based on a Twitter feed. I'm thinking, yeah, is this what's going on now? And yes, yes, it is. I know. I mean, it's funny because I re- I was like, I remember when I was a kid and all of a sudden uh, in the music scene, there was punk rock. And I remember being a worried Jewish boy saying to my mother, Ma, I think punk rock's going to ruin the world. Uh-huh. I think punk rock's going to ruin the world. And it was like all of a sudden <laughs> Twitter, a Twitter uh, account, um, a tweet for Justin Halpern, brilliant. I mean, yeah. creator of elementary with Pat Schumacher. And they, uh, this was Justin's, um, you know, his, it was his account, yeah. but it was, it, it had a beginning, middle and an end. Yeah. When you heard it, you know, it was just like shit. My dad says, it's just like, well, that, that inside that line, speaking of Hemingway, uh-huh. the best story ever, the shortest story ever written. Yeah. What is it? Um, uh, baby shoes for sale, never right. worn. Right. Right, that's I is. might they might be out of order, but that's those are the words I think. Yeah, and 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 shit. My dad says was like, "Oh my god, you know exactly what that is. That's a son with being embarrassed by a father that he loves." You know, so it's all it was all there. It was yeah, all but there. if if I don't know, was there ever a moment like like now? Sure. Oh, I, this guy's this person has a big Twitter feed. Yes, let's bring him in. Let's talk with him, right? But was there a moment when you were doing this? Like, are we really, are we really basing a show on a Twitter feed? I mean, I know you you saw more, but I would have been worried. Yeah, I, yeah, but but it was it was it was literary. I mean, I don't know. And Justin was like just so sharp and smart, and and uh, there were there were ideas immediately, you know, and and you. So, so it, it, it didn't feel like it didn't feel hacky at, at all. Uh-huh. But by the way, I will, I will say this. It was uh, one of the handful of terrible, you know, deadly fatal casting mistakes that I made in giving um, the, the job of the son to the actor that we did when the actor of the hundreds of people that we uh, read for that part, there was only one guy who came in and he was a slam dunk and he was the one and he was the only one of all the 500 men that read for the part that Bill Shatner said, that's the guy. And that guy was David Krumholtz. Krumholtz. And oh, right, David right. Krumholtz, it was just, it was so there, it was so there in the room. Yeah, I forgot Perfect. it was him. He understood everything. And, um, uh, you know, and I brought some of my own bullshit to it and, and, you know, and so did, so did everybody else. Right. You know, David didn't, you know, he didn't look like we wanted it to look, you know, we wanted a cuter person, you know, and all that cute. kind of stuff. It's and, so funny. We did a show with him years later. Crummy, sweet kid, sweet guy. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Wow. Yeah. Such, about such that. a, such a, such a talented guy. Such yeah. A guy. Yeah. Interesting. And a, and a brother in neurosis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but let me talk about that because you tend to put yourself into the characters you write. Yeah. And is that, how hard is that? Is that difficult for you? Does everyone know that it's you? I, I guess. think so. I mean, I mean, well, I only tell the stories in first person. I mean, I don't say I, I you know, I have a friend who, uh, you know, had sex with a chauffeur from Music Express. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I you know, I, I tell the story about like what I did and, uh-huh. and how embarrassing it was, you know, and uh, uh, um, and and what I did and what I did to recover from it. Uh-huh. And, and um, I got very comfortable with that, but, but, and, and it's made it possible to, to tell a lot of stories because that's, that's what I have. But that's on the flip I- side, are you, are you sometimes protective of the character when someone else pitches an idea and like, well, I wouldn't do that. Well, it's not you. It's, it's, it's oh my God. Good. No, if it feels true and it sounds true, uh-huh. I, I, I completely, I, that, like, I, I mean, I'm not going to go back on what I said. If, if your story 
is fantastic and it's not it's not you know nuts i mean i'm i i want to tell that i want to tell that story right you know i mean those those are the ones that i like the ones that really like are like oh jesus christ that's so uncomfortable that's uh-huh. so uncomfortable and so awkward and we have to do that we have to tell that story did you start every well, on your shows that you run, do you start every morning with like, hey, what's everybody up to? What, what have you, are you trying to pull stories out of people, personal we stories? We call a host chat. Oh, is that what you called it? Yeah, we call a host chat because, you know, when I first started out, I, I knew I, I had a rundown of, mm-hmm. uh, I think, uh, Regis and, uh, Regis and, uh, who is Frank Gifford's wife? Kathy Lee. Kathy Lee, Regis and, Kathy Lee. And on the, it was called, it's called host chat. Yeah. On the run- yeah. By the way, it might have been on. On uh, Mike and was called that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where that's where that's where it comes from. It doesn't come from Regis. It comes from that. And I mean, and and uh, and and David and I. It, I mean, it's arguably sometimes uh, the best part of the day. You know. Well, yeah. We see when you, it's funny because you guys set up Mike and Maddie, and then you you bounced off that show probably in a matter of months, and then I was, I I got I took your job and I was. You know, I took the job that you vacated yeah. and I was thrilled. And it with you, it was, um, you know, like, I, I don't know, for me, it was like, oh, my God, this is this giant opportunity. And you, you guys, this is your temporary gig. Oh, it, well, it wasn't a temporary gig. It was a fall from grace. I mean, I think we had already been working. It was it was something was going on in our career. Either we were in between agents or something. But that was that was an absolute like blight i mean it was terrible that experience you know what and why what was it for me well, we, were, we were we were you know wga prime time right, and that, and that and was not we're writing a strip sh- bullshit show you know with with mm. two hosts that hate each other you know and <laughs> i mean a great thing came out of it though you know you know the first week of the of the run of those shows David Cohan is in all of the sketches. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, David, David, we wrote him into um, the sketches. He played like kind of this dumb um, PA character. Uh huh. And, and uh, we would do these cold opens that they could never make them work. They could yeah. never make them work because Maddie couldn't act and Mike mm-hmm. was always frustrated. And, mm-hmm. But, but, um, Dave, Dave's in them. They're I, they're online, I believe, and they're pretty funny. Oh my god, how funny! Yeah, it's incredible. And so, going, I guess, going forward, as we as I take up a lot of your time here, what what do you see going forward with the industry? What's I don't know what what's what does it look I like know, to you? Like, I mean, I I I I that's one thing. Like, I I won't I won't do like uh, uh you know, it's like the more I know the 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 more I realize how little I know, kind of thing. Yeah. Like I, I I I I believe this. I believe that um, good shows always will out. They will always happen, mm-hmm. uh, and and even in spite of the system. Um, uh, um, uh, so I think that that I think that that can happen. But like I don't know. Like I'll 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 tell you in I'll tell you in six months. You know I can come back and we'll talk about whether the multicams that. I have in the hopper right now, if it, you know, if they work and if they, if they, if they get on the schedule, because things just don't, right. They just, it just doesn't happen anymore. People maybe. think you're, yeah. People think when you're in it, you're, you're made. Well, you be always, your next job is never, is never guaranteed. It's not, I, yeah, you know, I don't want to be, I don't like the, that, that 50 something year old guy that doesn't work anymore. Uh-huh. Like, I, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that person. And I'm, and I, I I I can be okay, I guess, reflecting, looking back on, I tried really hard, you know, and I and I want to, and I kind of want to. Sh- this this might be embarrassing, but I I really would like to show myself that I, I ha- have not disconnected from, um, the the ma- the popular culture, you know, that that I can that I can tap into. Uh, the way people feel still still yeah. and I'm not like like I'm not just a guy making dad jokes you know I mean I'm not that guy anyway that my mm-hmm. my daughters that's not their experience so it's it's like um uh it's it's just a matter of can I can I get the system to work on my behalf you know? what do you tell young writers trying to break in then 
Do that there's always room for one more. Uh huh. You know, I mean, I I just do I so feel that way. But but I feel like you've got to be. Um, uh, if you get on a show, I think that the goal is um, to to parrot the showrunner. Yes. So yes. Do make the sound that that he's making. Don't make some other weird Crispin Glover sound. Uh-huh. Make 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 the sound that he's making. Right. And and then improve upon that. Yeah. Uh, um, um, it's like actors that you hire to do a guest spot on a show and they kill it, right? You hire them and then they get on the floor and they give you something else. It's like, right. no, no, no. Do what? Do exactly the thing that we hired you. For, yes. You know, right. for. Uh, so a, a writer, it's like I read your spec script. I, I love it. I love it. I love your tone. I loved talking to you. And by the way, in that meeting, I'm thinking as much about what's it going to be like to do post chat with this person uh-huh. and do anything else because you know I I I don't know that that I I should say this but I will because mm-hmm. I don't stop myself you know a lot of times when we meet when we meet writers um we read them after we met them you read them if they, after if they, them. Have, if they have a thing if they are if they are in the system uh-huh. to the point that the studio and the network are saying oh yeah we we love this person right we think this person is great. This person has just come out of NYU. We think uh-huh. you'll love this person, right? Uh, you've you've got to meet this guy, or you've got to meet this woman, or this human. Um, I sit down with them, and then it's like, mm. okay, you're you are you are. Cool. I wouldn't trust anything they say, though. That's the thing. You Why? know what do you mean? Well, because they you you'll you got to meet this writer, and they're like, but I don't think they know what to what I'm looking for in a writer. That's the thing. Well, then you figure. Well, then, you, but 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 it's like both have, you know, equal power in in the hiring. So it's like right. you you meet them. Do I like them? Am I not? Am I, you know, you can read a script and like, uh, uh, then all of a sudden you imbue all the, the with right. this stuff that, and they're just like, uh, uh, ugh, they're a drip, and they're mm-hmm. you know, they're not cool, and they're not easy to talk to. I mean, by the way, I mean if the script's like brilliant, you're gonna you're gonna hire them. But well, also but, I imagine also intimidated by by your success too. It's not easy to sit opposite you guys. I, but we try really hard to to like to like to pull that out of the room as fast as we can uh-huh. because uh, um, it just it it gets in the way. I don't I don't and like I said, it's like I won't really comment on our our position in the world and that kind of stuff. I I I I just can't even think about that if someone's coming in, you know, to to talk to us. I I I feel as much like I want them to like. I'm still I'm still the same, you know. I uh-huh. I, I still you know, as my husband says, everybody has diarrhea. You know, it's like <laughs> I, I I I want them to like me. You still sob to Enya. <laughs> yes, no, that, I don't, that I don't do anymore. I do. I am a little bit. My spine's a little straighter, you know. But, but I you know I I. I don't have one way of doing anything is really the moral of the whole, the whole. Wow. Podcast. Wow. Max, this is, I, I, so, I'm so appreciative that you took the time. I don't know, just to talk because oh my God. you have so much wisdom to share. It's just so interesting to hear your journey. And I don't know. I, it is, it is a joy to talk to you. And I will, and I don't usually enjoy these things as much as I have. And it's because, and that says everything about you. And, at ease. And yeah, I mean, you're just you're just easy and good and smart, and you know everything, and uh, and yeah. yeah, you know a lot. I mean, I, I your commentary throughout the strike was just fantastic and on point, and and you were putting yourself out there in a and way ball, that, ballsy is what I ballsy <laughs> ballsy. Yes, yeah. that's right. I mean, you know, you get you get scared. One gets scared many yeah. things when you have you know. Mm-hmm. I guess you don't have that much to lose. That's pretty you know? much it. That's pretty much it. Right. Yeah. But 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 um, you know, wait, so can you just tell me before we say goodbye, yeah. what are you working on? Well, we're gonna talk more when my when we're done talking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to wrap it up? Do we sing or what do we do? Yeah, we uh, we hug virtually and okay. uh and okay. we tell everyone to be the best creative versions of themselves. And, That's exactly and, right. Yeah, and, and encourage and there's people. There's room for one more. I love that. There's room for one more. So if you're Always. listening, yeah. 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 No matter what it is. And uh uh, God damn, I wish I could sing the theme for, I mean, if you have, have your sound engineer, why don't you just have your sound engineer fade in the theme from the Mike and Maddie show written by Charles Lustman? Uh, because, oh, shine, it's a beautiful 
day in America. I'm not paying for that needle drop. I, I got my own music. He doesn't on. need the money. I'm, <laughs> I'm to him. Okay. All right. Thank um, you again, Max. I really you, appreciate Janet. it. Yeah. Okay. And, and don't go anywhere. All right, everyone. We got another great, more great episodes. Wasn't that interesting talk? He's a great guy. Uh, go, go watch him. Go watch Will and Grace again. It, it's ageless. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Until next week. So now we all know what the hell Michael Jam is talking about. If you're interested in learning more about writing, make sure you register for my free monthly webinars at michaeljammon.com slash webinar. And if you found this podcast helpful or entertaining, please share it with a friend and consider leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. That really, really helps. For more of this, whatever the hell this is, follow Michael Jammon on social media at Michael Jammon Writer. And you can follow Phil Hudson on social media at Phil A. Hudson. This podcast was produced by Phil Hudson. It was edited by Dallas Crane. And music was composed by Anthony Rizzo. And remember, you can have excuses or you can have a creative life. But you can't have both. See you next week. <laughs>